we are and what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about uh, wine and word yeah. and we're going to uh, this is uh, I guess uh, honoring Okrafest online 2020 yeah so I'm gonna I brought along my 20 my uh, my haircut my perfect for this for this for the appropriate time for this I'm gonna talk and introduce two wines and I think you've got something special you're gonna to introduce to us I do yeah if you're interested I brought along a copy of my book and uh, I can do a few readings from that if you like uh, as we progress through the wine but I'm really interested because I, I, I don't know a lot about wine at all and I know you, you've you been doing a lot of work with it traveling and accumulating different wines and hosting parties and things and so I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing a few stories maybe and learning a little bit more about the wine. So I'm just going to tell you a couple of little things about doing a wine tasting. We're going with red first? Uh, no, we're going to go with white okay, and often in a tasting you'll wine. start with the lighter wines and work your way up to the heavier wines okay. just so that your palate can work with that. So the first thing you ever do with wine is you look at it and you want it to be clear. Okay. And unless there is some fault, meaning there's some wine cork in that, it's clear. Right. We all often then talk about what is the color of the wine. So right. I'm going to say that this is probably a straw white. I mean, it's a pretty light, okay. clear wine. When you smell a wine, you bring it to your nose and you don't do this. You bring it. Oh. Get right into you it. You want to get right. your olfactory in there. You want to close off any of the air around and you want to get right in there. Oh, yeah. We're gonna. I'm going to tell you that there's some citrus in there. I can get some lime. It's it's uh, maybe a little florally, maybe some orange blossom. Yeah, the citrus I can get. You can get the citrus yeah. from it. Although I wouldn't have if you hadn't said it. So now we taste it. When right. you taste wine, you put it in your mouth and you swish it around so that it can hit all the points of your tongue. The sweet, the sour, the bitter, and to get the saliva going. Oh, that's, okay. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to drink, All right. which is the best part. I know, right? <laughs> when I drink the wine, I wonder sometimes, does the nose yeah. match the palate? Is what I'm smelling, what I'm tasting? You know, what you're doing there now kind of reminds me of something that you do with, I do with poems sometimes is that the, po the poem is not so much meant for the meaning as it is what it does with your tongue and the movement in your mouth and the sound that you, that, that you, you project. And I've got, a, I've got a poem there that I, that just when you were doing that, you it just came right to your mind. Yeah, perfect. I was out at Eastport. Now, I gotta find the darn thing. And uh, there was a jellyfish on the beach. There was a lot of jellyfish around on the beach. And uh, I was, uh, there was a couple of kids gonna, you know, beat one up and I chased them away and then, you know, dug a, a hole and let it go out and float out. And then I thought, and then I thought how sort of futile that whole action was. Argument with my heart. At my feet, a jellyfish amid the midsummer ribbons of kelp. No pulse, no thought, no bones, as the swish of the tide scours its grave. I chide two children who would scoop it up, who would hold that milky galaxy in a plastic lid and carry it dripping to the picnic table, tugging blue flies into orbit. The stinging tentacles ripple in the backwash as the dome of the evening slides down. With a discarded plastic shovel, I prod this alien into the retreating tide until it shifts, then lifts, and then begins to float away. And I am stranded by the thought, what need has it to follow my plan? The ocean is its heart, the moon its thoughts, and for bones, for bones it has this gravel strand. Wow. So I felt like I was there. I felt like I saw that jellyfish. But I just wanted to go, like there's a couple of places in this poem, uh, uh, for example, uh, where I wanted to, I wanted to uh, recreate the sort of the, what happened as the uh, jellyfish went back, into, went back into the tide. So with a discarded plastic shovel, I prod this alien into the retreating tide until it shifts then lifts and then begins to float away. So it's kind of capturing, it's the, it's the movement. Yeah, I was just gonna say movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and uh, also uh, the, it was the same thing at the beginning, no pulse, no thought, no bones, 
as the swish of the tide scours its grave. So I, at the opening of the poem, I had that movement, and then towards the end, I brought it back in again, yeah. just to you know keep the ocean present in it. Fabulous. Little did those children know they were inspiring you to write a beautiful poem. Right. We're gonna or go back sentencing. To, there yeah. you go. We're going to go back to the wine. It's a white wine that in the summertime can be nice and crisp and light and fresh. You can pair it with poultry. You can pair it with seafood. Have it as an aperitif. I'm going to show you what the wine is. Oh. So you are drinking a Pinot Grigio from Italy. Um, and it runs about $21 a bottle. Okay, I'm hoping something you say about the red will remind me of another poem, but we'll have to... We'll See have to if I inspire with... you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. here we go, no pressure. We are moving, I'm gonna tell you, to a New World wine. So we're leaving Europe, and we're going to the New World, which is everything but Europe. So we're gonna do exactly what we did the last time. The first thing we do is we look at the wine. We look for fault. Is it clear? Difficult, and I won't get into it right now, how to tell clarity in a red wine, but if you can kind of see down and see a stem or see through it, if you don't see any cork sediment, it's clear, okay? And the color, so we talk color next. Why we use a white tablecloth often in wine tasting is so that we can do this. We can put it down and we can look at the color as it blends out. Oh, yeah. Sometimes people will go a color in the middle to a water white rim. You depends on who you're with, the level of their knowledge, how much right. you want to discuss it. I'm going to tell Whether you. Whether they're not, they're colorblind. You got it. Yeah. I'm going to tell you this is a ruby garnet. So Oops. we've done color. We are going to smell. We get to shove our schnoz in. Right in. Oh, wow. That's really oh, isn't nice. Isn't that lovely? It is. <laughs> uh, so I have a personal preference of wines. I like the earth. I like tertiary flavors. So I like yeah. mushroom or unami, or I like when you can say that there's some leather or tobacco. Um, that's the other thing, having the terminology, right? Yeah. You have the language to describe it. Because a lot of time, a lot of things you're saying, and I remember those smells, but I never would have thought Think to say like leathery or yeah. something like that. Well, you know, it's white. I, I alluded to with white wine. It's not on like the painting world. It's about 50 shades of white out there if mm. you go to buy white paint, and they all have different names. It's interesting, though, you know, how smells can, you know, uh, can evoke yeah. feelings and emotions. Because right now... Uh, are we having an inspired moment we for are. Our poetry? I, I just thought there's a poem <laughs> in here where uh, uh, part of part of it is uh, a smell that evokes a particular emotion. Okay. So can I, I would you mind if I, I read that? I would love to hear it. All right, break out. Because you know what? If you're, if you're gonna talk about anything with smell and color, there might that might be in here. Yeah, well, uh, that's a, that's another thing that reminded me. It's called kneeling on cranberries, and ah. to me, this is kind of like the colors of, of cranberries. Okay. Not, not exactly, but anyway. So this is this is the poem. Okay, it's called kneeling on cranberries. It's like love, you said. Even when you know where to look, you never know what you will find until you get there. You led me along treacherous cliffs to the edge of a marsh that sloped steeply to the rocks. We clung to shrubs as their roots dripped into tidal pools, choked with decaying seaweed and plastic scraps. Reckless between the sunlight and the damp that darkened your knee, the knees of your jeans, we probed for red berries, white beneath. They fell into the moss at the slightest touch. By mid-morning, tired from stooping along the verge, we found an alcove of rocks, lay quiet, the sky propped on wet knees. Spray from the lunar surf left a hint of salt on fingers stained by the picking. The earth shuddered against my back. The thin warmth of a fall sun massaged me. But your kiss was flat and as cold as the season. And it was then that the wind swung north and drove us back towards our lives. Raw berries rattled in the bucket. A month later, I discovered it behind the shed door. Peel off the lid and find your breath fragrant in my mouth. Wow. I got goosebumps on that one. <laughs> Good. That was great. Yeah, thanks. So that's that's that whole idea, though, of how things mature and, and how we can link certain emotions to uh, uh, scents and things that we don't normally associate with berries or grapes yeah. in this case. 
And then, well, like the quote that started the thing off, you're expecting one particular thing and then you get there and you explore it and discover that it really it's nothing like what you expected yeah. at all. And yet if you desert it or leave it behind, then in the end it can come back and haunt you. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of the idea. That's there. Let's drink wine and talk <laughs> about it. All right. All right, thank you. It's lovely. What I thought was a ripe cherry, I think is more of a stewed or a deeper cherry on my palate, right. um, which I like. Um, I think it's a little aged. This white wine was a 2018. Right. This is more has more age to it, has more substance, because wines age. This is a, this to me is a wine that we talked about in terms of taste for things. Acidity, I'd give it a medium, medium plus. Balance, uh, body. I think it's a medium, nice wine across the board. Great to have, again, with cheeses. I think it would go lovely with bacalao, with salt fish as a Newfoundlander. You could have it with turkey. So that wine, I will unveil it and let you know what it is. All right. Another moment of tension and excitement. So these are great little bags that my son gave me when I started taking wine courses and decided to open a little business, and I love them. You are drinking a St. Clair Pinot Noir 2013. Ochre Fest uh, will be taking this video of us and putting it out for everyone to enjoy. Um, but one of the things I'm gonna would like to do with Tasting Zen L is then share the video and ask my followers and additional ones if I can pick them up to like it, to share it, to tag it, and they will win a bottle of wine that I will supply and a book of yours as well. Excellent. Okay, so we'll okay. put that out. And if they're in town, I wouldn't even mind. I would go and do a short reading for them if they like. Well, we'll while have... they were drinking the wine. So now I have goosebumps and I'm excited. I'm, I'm sure. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Wade. Thank you. <laughs>